something I know George campaigned for long and hard himself. Uh, but for me, this country leaving the European Union, even as someone who's been at the left on my life, is down to the drive of one man. <laughs> so who am I, where am I from, and why am I here? Well, my name is Chris McLeod, and I'm working class. And I'm a comedian from Red Car near Middlesbrough, on Teesside, and I've come here to tell you why, as a working class Labour man, I voted Conservative, along with millions of other traditional working class Labour voters at the last general election. As I said, I live near Middlesbrough on Teesside. If you've never been to Middlesbrough before, I'll set the scene, it's very rough. Put it this way, it makes Chelmsley Wood look like Belgravia. <laughs> it's the kind of place where if you see two blokes walking side by side, chances are, in all probability, they'll be handcuffed to each other. <laughs> <laughs> It's rough because it's suffered years of a lack of investment and in our steel industry being destroyed. These things have led to high unemployment, crime and deprivation. A lot of big towns and cities in the north have had tons of investment. I love going to traditional working class cities like Manchester, Leeds, Nottingham, Liverpool, Birmingham. These places almost have a continental vibe to them now. If you walk through the centre of Birmingham on a sunny morning, it's almost like being in the south of France. You know, there's a buzz about the place. You see tables and chairs on the pavements and you know that means that all the cafes and restaurants are open for business. In contrast, if you see tables and chairs on the pavement on a sunny morning in Middlesbrough, you know that means somebody's been evicted. <laughs> we actually have something in common with Birmingham. Both places have been used as a setting for the poverty porn TV show, Benefit Street. It was filmed on Teesside in a place called Port Clarence between Middlesbrough and Hartlepool. Hartlepool, now there's a place. It's home to ex upper class Labour MP Peter Mandelson. Home to a polluted petrochemical plant. Home to the Hartlepool contaminated ghost ships. Home to a radioactive nuclear power station. And by a strange coincidence, home to frogs with 15 eggs. <laughs> and the highest rates of testicular and ovarian cancer in the country. They don't have any street lighting in Hartlepool. The council have no need because at half past eight every night, young people light up automatically and run around like glow sticks. <laughs> it always makes me wonder how Mandelson ever became MP for Hartlepool in the first place when he had no in common with the people there. I mean, he's a lord. He hangs out with the Rothschilds and royalty. He was even friends with Jeffrey Epstein. Seriously, what does he have in common with the people on Benefit Street? Because our area was always staunch Labour, there was an old saying that went, you could put a red rosette on a pig and people would still vote for it. Well, in Hartlepool it was worse than that, because in Hartlepool they put a red rosette on a Tory and people still voted for it. <laughs> I mean, Mandelson was upper class. He's an upper class infiltrator. You might not know this, but in the Napoleonic Wars, the people of Hartlepool found a monkey on the beach and they'd never seen one before, so they thought it was a French spy and they young it. <laughs> That's why they called people in Hartlepool monkey hangers, because they thought it was a French spy. Well, it's a good job they didn't mumble Peter Mandelson, isn't it, really? <laughs> Apparently, when Mandelson was canvassing in Hartlepool, he went into a fish and chip shop, and they gave him fish, chips, and mushy peas, and he thought mushy peas was avocado dip. <laughs> I've seen people of Mandelson's ilk taking control of the Labour Party, my party, the Tony Blairs and the Tristan Hunts, the Keir Starmers, the Emily Thornberrys. The only time they're desperate to be working class 
is at election time but they come into a council state with the red rosettes on and they're going, look at me, I'm like you, I'm like you. My now ex-MP was an upper middle class girl from Kent. She knocked on my door and I'm like, you're like me, are you? Are you really? Do you tighten up every time a gas bill lands on your mat? Have you ever ran out of electricity and had to go down the paper shop and top up on your key? Ever been on a backy run or smoked snaggy embassy regal? <laughs> After the election defeat, because the working class has abandoned them, it's been hilarious to see them desperately trying to convince us how they're working class. I'd love to go to Kia Starmer and say, you're working class are you Kia? Do you pee in the bath? Do you eat fish and chips out of newspaper? Do you call your wife our lass? Do you call your even meal your dinner or your tea? <laughs> and it's this disconnect between the Labour MPs and the Labour Party and its traditional working class voters, and I've tried to make light of it, that was one of the reasons why I and millions of other Labour voters, people who voted Labour all their lives, didn't vote Labour this time round. These people, these middle class and upper middle class progressive liberals who were obsessed with political correctness and ID politics are light years away from my class, from the working class. Working class people in the main don't give a toss about PC, they're too busy trying to feed the kids and pay the bills. And these Labour MPs, they don't think like us, they don't speak like us, they don't act like us. It's not our party anymore. They turn their backs on us by deliberately ignoring the majority of their constituents over the issue of Brexit. And for me, for me, that was deliberate. They did it on purpose and they forced Jeremy Corbyn to support it, knowing that they were going to get wiped out at the general election. And that was the only way they could get rid of Jeremy Corbyn, because they tried in two leadership challenges and failed. It was a coup d'etat. As a working class bloke, possibly vote for my MP when she flagrantly ignored me and 68% of her constituents. How could I vote for Labour when they were prepared to ignore the biggest democratic vote that this country's ever had? In essence, in me voting Conservative for the first time in my life, I was voting for democracy. That's really bad, isn't it? <laughs> eh? Having to vote for democracy, or even the idea of it, in a general election. You shouldn't have to vote to keep democracy alive in a country. It should be just a given. But not in the last election. Because if Labour had won the last election, or if it had been on Parliament, and had formed a coalition with other parties who wanted a second referendum, or even wanted to scrap the referendum altogether, then democracy would have died. Because no vote in this country would have ever had meaning again. At the last election, I, because the opposition party's stance on Brexit was forced to prioritise. I was being forced to put, in, put things in order of importance. The NHS, workers' rights, austerity are all hugely important. But they're not as important as democracy. But then again, they weren't that important to the Labour Party or the Labour MPs who started the privatisation of the NHS and Airbus in the first place. brought in by the Tories in 14 years of being in power. They voted for no hours contracts. And austerity wasn't in that, that important to 184 Labour MPs with the failed to vote against Tory austerity measures in 2015. <laughs> but these things mattered to me, so having to put things in order of importance didn't sit easy with me. But at the end of the day, nothing is more important than the power of our vote. Our vote is the only thing that protects us from the man. It's our last line of defence against those in control, save taking to the streets and peaceful demonstration. We don't want to do that no more, because working class people are being kept down at heel through being, amongst other things, conned into thinking that they need a non-stop stream of material things and in turn being chained to the floor by debt in order to pay for them. It's like working class people have almost been conned into thinking they're not working class anymore because they bought their own council house and they've got a cheap merc on the drive, and the kids have got an iPad, wait for it each. <laughs> for me, working class people are terribly discriminated against today. We get very few, if any, chances for our voices to be heard. 
We get very few, if any, chances to express ourselves. We're looked down upon and sneered at and branded thick and racist by these progressive liberals. After the general election, there was death on us online. The thing is, right, that I expect to be looked down upon by the Tories, but I don't expect it from elements of the Labour Party or their supporters, the party that will set up to represent me, my party. And I'm tired of it. For too long, the Labour Party have taken us for granted. It's been like being in an abusive relationship with someone who puts you down, takes you for granted, goes off and courts to the people behind your back, in this case, middle class people who vote to remain. Like all abusive relationships, you stay with them because it's all you know, and you actually start to think you need them. Until one morning, you wake up and you think, hang on, I don't need this anymore. I'm better than this, and you end it. And that's what happened on the 12th of December 2019. <laughs> the working classes after years have been taken for granted, being looked down upon and ignored by the Labour Party. And now these middle class progressives who have joined the party deliberately to scupper Brexit. Um, basically the, the working class has ended up and ended the relationship. I believe there's a class war taking place in this country. I also believe that the real enemy isn't the right. I think it's globalism, of which the EU is a massive tool. But though we've left it, the EU still has a massive, massive influence. It's creating modern day slavery. It's restricting our free speech. It has our politicians in its pocket, and as a result, it's fashioned and is fashioning a society in its own greedy, uncaring image. And never was that control of our politicians more evident than with Brexit when our politicians simply ignored their own constituents to side with the globalist rich man's club known as the European Union. <laughs> now I think it's fantastic that this party is beginning because now left-leaning people, left-leaning working class people have got a voice. But I also believe that at some point the left of the working class is going to have to unite with the right of the working class in order to defeat this globalism. And I'm not talking far right. I mean, I know loads of working class people who have voted Conservative for years and years and years. I'm a left wing, traditional Labour voter, ex party member, whose family are all Labour people, whose granddad was a shop steward in the 40s and 50s. But I'd have no apprehension at all in encouraging white, right wing voting con working class voters to come and join with the left because it's the only way we're going to beat globalism and loosen its greedy unjust grip in our society and politicians and it's the only way if both sides come together left and right as George and Nigel Farage did in 2016 to fight for Brexit and as both sides are doing now in France as we speak and God knows, God only knows how much I love the spirit and defiance of those French people. Yeah, yeah. The making, forcing their politicians to listen to them. I hope George forming this party is the first step to becoming a whole movement of working class people, no matter what the race, religion or politics. A movement all standing up together and finding a voice. I hope this fight back happens now. Because I've got six grandchildren that I love with all my heart. I've got six grandchildren that I want, in future, to have a voice, to be heard. I've got six grandchildren that I want to be represented properly by the people they elect to serve them. I've got six grandchildren that I want to be free. Now, I know I'm only a stand-up comedian. I make people laugh for a living and sometimes I don't even do that. <laughs> I'm now flash, now. And I've never been to university. And some of you might be sat there agreeing with me. And some of you might be sat there thinking, what's he doing here? And you might not be agreeing with me. But if you don't agree with me, don't hate me or write me off as a man. Just keep it in mind that I'm only a normal bloke trying to do my best for people that I care for. 
It seems to me that today people are all too ready to write people off as human beings just because of a difference of opinion. I've always tried to see through different opinions, to see the person beneath. I don't hate or dislike anyone, I just like some people more than others. And that includes the bloke who murdered my dad in 2011. I forgave him and I don't hate him. And I think not hating at a time when it seems that that's all the media want us to do and at a time when we really have to put our differences behind us and start pulling together is essential. So I hope that today is the start of people, especially working class people, pulling together in order to stand up and be heard. And if you don't want to do it for yourselves because you feel like you've been peeing against the wind for years and you're not being listened to, or you feel like you're too old and you've lost your fight and you'd rather sit watching crap tell you with a few cans and a curry, then for heaven's sake, do it for your children. Do it for your grandchildren. Because that's why I'm really here today. Speaking the truths, not in anybody else's heart, but mine. <laughs> I'm speaking those truths in my heart and I'm trying to make a difference. And today, and if I get emotional, I'm sorry, but that's the kind of bloke I am. Take me or leave me. Today, I'm here for Eliza, Lucius, Esme, Willow, Matilda, and my newborn grandson, Miles. I'm here, my gloves are off, and I'm doing it for them, my grandchildren. I hope you join this movement, and I hope you all do it for yours. The essence of life, our blood, our blood nurtures its soul, our humiliation and pain gives it expression, our ignorance gives vision to its life.